Okay. Welcome all of you. Now we'll see today the last home assignment given to you on 17th August today's morning consisting of five numericals and let us see how many of them we are able to solve at this juncture. If you have any queries about a specific problem, uh, you can indicate or else I'll uh, scan through the home assignment part of it. Uh, any question you are having about the quizzes, quiz 4, quiz 5, quiz 6, because our last live session was on Friday. So whatever quiz was there Friday evening, Saturday evening and Sunday evening, quiz 4, 5, 6, suppose you have any query you can ask or we will go ahead with the home assignment. Find the greatest number that exactly divides 105. 1001 and 2436. Naturally, all of us know how to go about it. The number which can divide all these three numbers means it's a highest common factor. So we want to obtain HCF of this. One way is to factorize this and proceed ahead. Suppose we realize that 2 and 3 are factors of this. It's always better to reduce the number with respect to 2 and 3. When things are divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, we should try. The moment things go beyond 13, 17, and uh, 19, and 23, we do not know quickly how to calculate it, so we don't go for it. Another way is you go for dividing adjacent number. How we find HCF? Go by adjacent division 500, 1001 upon 105. I told you. What you do in such thing, either these two numbers or these two numbers or these two numbers. The first trick is closer numbers. These are closer numbers. So 1001 divided by 105. What we are doing? We are finding HCF of all the three numbers. Prior to that, we are going to find HCF of these two numbers. And with respect to that, we will tackle the other one. Okay? 105. So I can have 9. I am having 55, 55 not divisible by 105, so what do we do, 105, this divisor is divided by this remainder, 55, I am getting 50, then this divisor is divided by this remainder, I am getting 5, then this divisor is divided by this remainder, And we get remainder 0. Wherever we get remainder 0, the divisor of that is HCF. So, we know that, we know that HCF of these two numbers, HCF of which two number? 105 and 1001. HCF of these two number and this number. If we find SCF, it will be practically SCF of these, this and this. So two numbers we have taken initially and then we will consider third number. And we know that SCF of this is 5. So I have 5 and 2, 4, 3, 6. Sorry, something went wrong. It was 1001. We divided by 105. So 9, 945. So here I'll get 6. Okay. And I'll get 56. I'm getting. I went ahead with 55. Doesn't matter. We'll just quickly go through it. 105 divided by 56. 1, 56. And what I get? This is 9, 4, 49. And then I'll get 56 by 56 by 49. I will get 7 and then 49 by 7. I forgot this one, hence the entire calculation went wrong. The moment I had of 1, 105 dividing 1001, I will get this. 56 dividing 105, we get this. 49 dividing 56, we get this. 7 dividing 49, we get 0. When the remainder is 0, this becomes HCF. 
So naturally, my SCF will be SCF of these two things is 7. And now I want to find out SCF of this and this. What we can do? I can try dividing this by 7. If it is divisible, then things will get 24, 36 divided by 7. When remainder is 0, this 7 becomes SCF. So SCF of the entire thing will become 7. And therefore, find the greatest number that exactly divides 105, 1001 and 2436 is 7 only. We can quickly converge to the 7 part of it. We see the next example. Rajesh is any query from your side, you can indicate in the chat box. Rajesh is 50 years old and Suresh is 60 years old. How many years before the ratio of their ages was 7 is to 9? What we do? Rajesh is 50. Suresh is <coughs> 60. How many years before the ratio was 7 is to 9? We don't know. So let's consider y years before the ratio was 7 is to 9. So Rajesh minus y upon Suresh minus y is 7 is to 9. So y years before Rajesh age was r minus y. Suresh age was s minus y. So ratio of the two is 7 by 9. So we get this. Okay. Now I'll go for cross multiplication. r minus y is equal to 7 s minus y. We know the value of R and we know the value of S. 9 into 50 minus Y is equal to 7 into 60 minus Y. So this becomes single equation, single unknown. We can simplify 9 into 50, 450 minus 9Y is equal to 420 minus 7Y. 420, 420 will come on this side, 9Y will go on this side. So 30 is equal to 2y. So y is equal to 15. y is equal to 15. The moment we say that, that means 15 years ago, the ratio of their age was 7 is to 9. 15 years ago, r, r minus 15 will be 35. And s minus 15 will be 45. And the ratio of 35 upon 45 is 7 is to 9. So it's verified. The answer is verified. Okay. We'll go for the next example. Five men and two boys working together. Meanwhile, anybody is having any question, query, or anything to be discussed, you can put it in the chat box so that we can answer that. Five men and two boys working together can do four times as much work as a man and a boy. Find the ratio of working capacities of man and boy. We are asked to find out the working capacity of man and boy, the ratio of them. Let's suppose capacity of man is M and we are capacity of boy is B. Five men and two boys working together can do four times as much work as a man and a boy. So, 5 men plus 2 boys, their capacity is equal to 4 times the work which can be done by one man and one boy. And we are supposed to find out man to boy capacity ratio. So, we are supposed to find out this. So, the formulation part goes like the mathematical formulation of whatever problem we are having is this. And solution part is mechanically solving this. It's a single equation, double unknown. So we cannot get value of any unknown, but we can get relationship between the unknowns. So typically, 5m plus 2b is equal to 4m plus 4b. m on this side, 5m minus 4m is equal to 4b minus 2b. So we get 1m is equal to 2b. And therefore, m by b, m by b will be 2 by 1. So this will be M is to be capacity of man to boy. So man is having double capacity than the boy is the answer. 
Okay. Now you see the different type of formulation basically gives you idea about how to read the problem from the descriptive mode, how to convert it into mathematical form and then solve it. Let's see two problems. Meanwhile, suppose you have any uh, query or question to be discussed, you can discuss. Two pipes A and B can fill a tank in 24 hours and 36 hours. Now let's suppose the pipe A can fill L liters which is capacity of the tank in 24 hours. So this is the rate of A. Rate of B is L by 36 hours. So liters per hour, liters per hour. If both the pipes are opened simultaneously, how much time will be taken to fill the tank? A very simple one. So we would like to obtain A plus B is equal to L by 24 plus L by 36. LCM of these two things will be 72 and therefore we can make it as 3, 3 by 72 is 1 by 24 plus 2 by 72 2 by 72 is 1 by 36. So 72 is LCM. So I am having 5L upon 72. So A plus B 5L upon 72. How much time will be taken? So what we will do? This 5 I will take it out. L divided by 72 by 5. So L liters in 14.4 hours. Alone A can do it in 24 hours, alone B can do it in 36 hours. Together they can finish the task in 14.4 hours. This will be the answer. So answer becomes very simple if your formulation is very clear and correct. Prima facie, all the problems which we are taking in the course are very trivial one, very simple one, fundamental one. So that you only know how to stretch your thinking to formulate the problem so that we can solve it. Okay. But then lot many problems are much more complicated than what we discuss over here and higher level of maturity will be required. What we can do in practice is practice the procedures, practice the middle school mathematics, master it so we can have highest speed in a calculation part of it. But then the formulation has to be learned by getting exposed to different types of problems from different books. Okay. Then we will come to the last problem in the assignment. A train 100 meter long is moving at a speed of 64 km per hour. Find the time taken by it to pass a man standing near the railway line. So suppose this is the train. This is engine. This is guard. And the man is standing over here. So train will pass the man. Means train must go for this position. So guard bogey should come here. Engine bogey should be here. I have shown this separation here just for clarity. But practically there is no separation. As guard bogey passes the man, we say that he, the train has passed the man. 100 meter long. So this is 100 meter. So practically you find guard bogey will move from here to here. So total length is 100 meter. So distance travelled by the train is 100 meter. And speed is, speed is equal to distance upon time. And therefore, time is equal to distance upon speed. Now, we realize that the speed is given in kilometers per hour, 64 kilometer per hour. And therefore, the distance must be given in kilometer and the time will get in hour. Okay. So, distance is 100 meter. So, it will be 100. I divide it by 1000 and I say that this is in kilometer. 100 meter. I divide by 1000, so it will be 100 by 1000 kilometers. So this much kilometer in this many kilometer per hour, kilometer will get cut down, hour will go up as a unit of this, and therefore I get 100, 100 upon, this is 1 by 10 upon 64 hour, and therefore it is 1 upon 640 hour. Now if you would, would like to express this in seconds, I can say 1 by 640 and 1 hour is 3600 seconds and therefore we get S equal to 360 upon 64 is equal to I can divide it by 4 
I'll get 90 by 16. I can divide further by 2, 45 by 8 seconds. So time will be required is equal to 45 by 8. Roughly 5.62, 5.62 seconds or precisely 45 by 8 seconds. So the train will fast move and it will cross the man adjacent to it. When the engine is adjacent to the man, we say that train has touched the edge where the man is there. And when guard bogey comes over here, we say that train has passed the man. Train has reached the man, train has passed the man. So total distance travelled by train is 100 meter. If you understand this, formulation is over. The question comes in, how much time is required to cover by a train to cover 100 meters with a speed of 64 km per hour? Appropriate unit you match, you will get precisely the same answer. Uh, any queries? Yeah, okay. So far, uh, we were not uh, getting any queries because as you understand, the mathematical formulation what we have done, we have not taken distinctly different problem from some other topic. We have taken the mathematical formulation problems on all the topics which were covered in the initial four tests. That is numbers, LCM, HCF, ratio proportion fraction and simultaneous equation. So on these four chapters, whatever mathematical formulation we are based on, we took. However, the mathematical formulation is a very big topic. And we have to cover a lot many things in the mathematical formulation. So typically, speed will increase in procedure and calculation by mastering middle school mathematics by practice. The maturity will increase by getting exposed to different types of problem. So you understand the mathematical formulation, then maturity will increase. Solving the mathematical form, so mastering solution procedure, will expedite the process. So speed will be increased by test series by mastering the middle school mathematics. But this part, mathematical formulation, is very tough. And getting exposed to different type of problem is the only solution for it. Go through number of examination, number of books, see the problem, and if you feel that you can solve it, put a mathematical form and did not solve the end solution because it takes time. But formulation doesn't take time, it requires thinking. If it clicks, within one minute you can put the formulation part of it. Okay, so this is called, I call this as logically solving the problem. And then actually solving the problem. Actually solving problem means the mathematical form, you take it to the logical end and you get the final answer. I hope all of you are uh, able to get through this. I would like to propose one thing, this being the last live session over here, I propose to give all of you a continuous practice of this. Let all of you be in touch with the entire process. So I intend to give, say at least on an average, one numerical per day to you to be solved. And then the evening you will get solution part of it. So you keep practicing continuously over it. You can come and approach my YouTube channel with same name, Dr. Surendra Gole. And then you access to it you can subscribe for it so that you will get notification over there. But every day one problem will allow you to solve around 350 problems in a year. And those who are in the first year of their graduation, without your specific knowledge or without any serious attempts for the aptitude development, in the span of three years, you will be solving over 1000 problems unknowingly. And that will take you to the substantial height. Of course, Knowing full well, doing serious attempt is definitely desirable in final year when your examination approach. But then in a span of your academics, what happens? You get lost into the very many subjects which are there for the university. And then you don't get time for this type of thing. But then solving one numerical per day may require not more than 5 to 10 minutes and you can go ahead with it. I think if there is no question or remark in the chat box, uh, all the best to all of you. Thank you very much for your future endeavor and we look forward to see you and meet you tomorrow from 11 to 12. There's a panel discussion that what industry is expecting from a fresh graduate and followed by a validatory session from 12 to 12.45. 
I expect all of you to get logged into it and let us have a, a last meet tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks one, thank all. Hmm? Yeah, she wants to just the same. 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 Yeah